It's a bit like those housing shows. This is the great reveal. We're about to have a try of see how our new extraction area works. We've got our hot water service organised. We've got our cutting blade sorted out. I've just got to hang up my last to be netting. And then we'll go and steal some honey out of the wife's backyard and see where this madness goes together before we have a whole blooming truckload of supers to uncap. So I figure we'll have a small run before we have a crazy ass run. Well, I reckon just for an experimental sake, we're gonna go in the backyard and steal some of the wife's honey, see if this extraction plant works before things get crazy. <laughs> and if you've only got one hive in your backyard, you do not need to get this excited about having a blooming uncapping machine and all the rest of it. You can check out some of our earlier episodes where we used a honey pour or you can use an unpicker or any other, well, there's a few other options. You can even crush the stuff up and let it drip out of a bucket, but we've got a few more than just one hive in the backyard if this is the only video you watch. Here's some busy little girls getting excited in the backyard. The wife's got all these lovely flowering plants for them to feed on. She's a good girl. <laughs> Get some honey out of this. We'll have to call it the Bush Bee Man's Backyard Honey. No, the Bush Bee Man's Wife's Backyard Honey. We'll just give them a little puff. Hey ladies, it's all right, it's only me. Everybody needs to get excited. <whistles> right, yo, wonder what we'll find. Hopefully there's some honey up the top here. Otherwise that'll be a bit of a dead loss, won't it? Let's see what's going on. What are you chicks up to in here? It's a fair way away from home, isn't it? Well, it feels pretty heavy. Golly gosh. Oh, look at that. I think we're gonna take this whole super. I reckon she's all ready to rock and roll out the door. Look at that. Magnificent. So I think what we're going to do, change the plans. We're going to have a look at this one outside one, and then we're just going to pop the whole super off and take it with us. Then we'll bring it back here, and we can pop it back up here, and the girls can fill it back up again, because that looks pretty full to me. You guys can go down. Uh, I was going to replace a few frames here and there, but I think what we'll do is we'll just take the whole lot. Being that there's a double one here. Oh, that's heavy. We'll get that honey out of there and we'll give them somewhere to play. That'll work, won't it? Oh. Well, being that we're taking the whole super and I'm not shaking the bees off, I'm just going to put it on its side a bit so then that'll get them a bit disorientated and they should run off the frames and go back home. You don't really want to take any more girls to the extracting plant than you have to. Especially if your extracting plant happens to be in your wife's laundry. That's just a very bad idea. Very good, ladies. Are we ready for a big trip? Whee! We'll just avoid the wife's sprinkler, because that's a little bit hectic. <laughs> Stroth! <laughs> Luminell, I think I should have brought a wheelbarrow. This is heavy. <laughs> Oh, just put a bit of fuel in the hot water service. This is a diesel hot water service. I suppose if I get stuck at the end of the world, at least I'll be able to have a wash. That's if I can find some diesel to put in this thing, I guess. At least I'll be clean and able to eat honey. I guess that'd be something. Not much of a prepper though, am I? I might have to get the cameraman to hold the funnel while he puts... I don't know that I could do everything at once. So we're just trying this out today, just to see whether it goes. So I'd hate to have a truck full of blooming honey supers and find out that none of this actually operates. And lucky for you, you get to watch me. So as you see, we've got our hot water surface going. So we've got our hot water coming in and coming out. And that's warming up the cutting blades that are hidden under here. Then the idea is you load your frames up the top and they're gonna run through the cutting blades and then they're gonna dangle into this tub. And hopefully that'll be decapped. Fingers crossed that that'll be the uncapped part and they can dangle there and drip. When we got them dangling there, we're gonna drop them into our spinner, which is our proper extractor. And if we're really lucky, there'll be some honey dribble out this tap, but I guess we'll all find out together whether there's enough honey in that one super to make this thing run, but it should. There should be something dribble out, even if it's only just enough for my toast or a crumpet in the morning. So out of the tub where they've been uncapped, we pop them in our extractor, Give them a whiz around until they will get their blooming selves dizzy as, well, probably as dizzy as me on a Friday night. Open up your tap, fill up your honey buckets, tip it into a settling tank, but we haven't got a settling tank today because we don't need to get that excited because there's not that much honey. If we were in a bigger operation, we'd probably put it through something to warm it up slightly so we could put it through a honey pump. You know what? 
One thing at a time. Let's not rush it. We've got one super of honey, so we don't need to get too excited. Well, we've got a few out there out the back. Shall we turn it on and make some noise and see what happens? So I reckon you can hang about five frames up here. I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like you put about five on there at a time, but we're going to put... Oh. I reckon that one's engaged. She's ready to go. Shall we just do one to make sure it actually works before we stack them all there? Look at that, one frame. I think we've got to clean it all now. <laughs> God, it's all covered in honey. Anyway, so far so good. That looked pretty cool. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that idea. Pretty happy with that. It took a fair chunk out of it though, didn't it? Let's just speed a few through and see how we get on, eh? I think that's a bit quicker, it doesn't break down for a bit. We're up. Boy, giddy out, let's chuck them in the extractor and see what happens, shall we? We'll get them dizzy as well as get their bits off. <laughs> this is probably not going to be the most efficient part of it all, but still. We got one that didn't quite get organised. Didn't quite build it out enough, that one, did it? That's right, we'll get the thing in a minute. That's why you have to have your honey pour handy. Get the last little bit sorted out. Or a cone pricker. Or you go and get your knife, which is probably what we need to do because we haven't got any of the other things sorted out. <laughs> That's why you do a test run before things get really crazy. So very good. So nine frames in the extractor. Anybody would think they'd work that out, wouldn't they? <laughs> I'm not sure. I better go and get a knife. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one because it didn't quite get done. If they don't build the frame out quite far enough, then of course it doesn't, the blades can't work all the way in there. So. Anyway, nothing in beekeeping is a perfect science. That's for sure. But I'll be right back. Well, I don't think that's very high tech, but it keeps the ladies out, so that's what it's all it needs to do at this stage. If I had gone and got my proper heat knife, I wouldn't be doing this so roughly, but still. Ah, oh, I don't know, Mark Deco, you ruffian. Yum, yum in somebody's tummy. Right, let's stick it in here and give it a whiz, shall we? Woo-wee! Yee-haw! <laughs> don't worry. And we've even got a break. <laughs> well, I don't know too much about nothing, but that looks pretty bloody empty to me. I reckon I'm pretty impressed with that. Wowzer, wowzer, wowzer. Maybe might progress a little bit further along my beekeeping life. If you would like to help me out, just go over to the website and buy some honey. If you don't want to buy some honey, maybe just go over to the other website and click on the support page and, you know, become a Patreon supporter of the show. Hell, there's so many options to make the Bush Bee Man show keep on, keep it on. Without your help, though, we wouldn't have got this far. I think we're three years in, so thank you very much to all your subscribers, clickers, and supporters, and people that send us money, and I don't know, I love you all, and keep it up, the good work. Don't forget, even at work, you can tell people to share and watch the Bush Bee Man. I've had some emails from some lads that sit around at Smoko and watch me every Thursday morning and say, how good's that? And they're in England. You never know. Don't be afraid. Share the love. Put these there and then we can take them back in the backyard. The wife won't even know we'll be there until she goes to get some honeycomb for an order. And she'll go, what the hell happened to all my honey? It's all in the price of progress, lovely wife. I'm pretty sure somewhere in the disclaimer it said we're in this mess together. Oh, she's a good soul, honestly. Goodness gracious, there you are. Not every woman will be able to put up with me. We've just got a couple of other boxes here that have been sitting around in over the winter and sort themselves out. We might as well run them through here and see what happens. They might be having a little bit more candyization because they've been out of the, off the high for a couple of days, so. But anyway, it'll be all right. La
You know, when you're on the internet doing your shopping and you see a bargain, be aware it's not always the bargain that you think it might be. I bought 500 frames that were already apparently put together and wired, but this is their first season that they've just been in the super and I would say that's not very good stainless steel if it blew and rusts out that quick. So maybe if you get a $2 frame, it might not be the bargain you think it is. So take a tip from me, just buy some shit that's worth having. Sometimes cheap is not necessarily cheap. Especially if you've got to rewire the jolly things or I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, don't do it! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I reckon that's pretty jolly successful. The only thing I can see here with our little experiment that I think I've got to change around a little bit, which I thought I might have to, is the uncapping part of my tank. Needs a lot more area for the uncapping stuff to end up in, so I'm going to have to drag, I have to drag it along a little bit as it gets full, and then I'm guessing I'm going to have another pot to chuck it in but anyway going forward we will come to another idea and figure out something to do with all these uncapping bits well i reckon that's bloody much that's a marked improvement <laughs> nah i reckon that's awesome i think that's going to speed things up quite dramatically so that'll be good the wife's a bit concerned she's not sure how she's going to keep uploading the extractor with me uncapper so whew, i might be able to say come on girl you're running late so if you're enjoying the journey, don't forget to like, click, subscribe. Hell, we'll even go down a little bit further and click on the support page and maybe help us out to keep the show rolling because, you know, this is, doesn't all just happen automatically. Lad has to come here and film and I have to bloom and put up with him saying, do that again, do that again. Oh my goodness me. So if you see me every now and then going, do that again, you'll know what happened. So please click, like, subscribe, share the madness.